Hi, it's Alan here. Um, this is, what is this, the fourth video that I've done now for my YouTube channel. Um, I've given it a couple of days, I didn't want to flood your Facebook and all that kind of stuff uh, with my videos, plus I've been busy doing bits and pieces for the business. Um, I thought I'd take a slight deviation from uh, what I was going to be doing, really. Um, I said to you at the beginning on one of these videos uh, that this is a journey for me. Um, I don't really know where I'm going to go or what I'm doing with uh, the whole social media, how the business is going to work out, but I thought um, I'd just take things a, back, a, bit, a bit back to the human part of things. And what I mean by that is I thought... Hi, I'm Alan. No, no, you know that. Hi, it's Alan here. Um, it's been a few days since I did the last video. I thought I'd give you a bit of a chance to uh, have a breather and not have your Facebook walls and whatever else uh, with my face all over it. I've had a few things to do business-wise, so I've kind of kept a bit quiet. So I thought I'd do a video. It's been a, a few days, so here we are. Um, on this one, I kind of thought I'd do something a bit more, uh, a bit more personal, really. Um, at the beginning of my four or the three, this is the fourth video. Um, I said that this was a journey, which it is. Um, I wanted to kind of go back to the beginning of where I was um, and a bit more about life, I suppose. Because in order for somebody to follow a journey, you really need to know where where things have been. I'm a kind of heart on the sleeve kind of person. I like to, to say it how it is. I like to laugh. I like to have a cry. Um, I like to be successful. I like to do things well. I like to think people think good of some of the things that I do. Um, don't get me wrong. Um, I have a... Uh, an evil twin inside of me like we all do that sometimes doesn't like things in my case I absolutely hate seagulls um, I've got a lot of other hatred of other things and well perhaps hatred is the wrong word I don't really hate much things if anything at all I just don't like a certain things and I've got my own opinions and one thing I wanted to make sure I come across in my videos is that I'm a human being um, there's one thing that as much as well Going back to the hypnotherapy, for example, I trained in hypnotherapy back in 1996, it was, uh, that I qualified from the Toy Acres Natural Therapy Centre in Blagowrie, run by Vicky Watson. Amazing, amazing woman with an incredible amount of knowledge, wisdom, uh, and even to this day we're talking, what, what year are we in? This is uh, 2018, so it's 22 years ago. I actually met that lady when I was 14 or 15 years old. Um, I saw, she's not going to like me for saying this, but I saw at that time, it would have been around 1993, when Paul McKenna appeared on our screens as a hypnotist uh, in the hypnotic world of Paul McKenna. And I thought, God, I love this. I, I love the whole sort of, it wasn't much so much about the control, but what the brain or what the mind could do. When it came to school, I didn't really have a great deal of interest in school, albeit I did okay. Um, I did my grades were all right. I had, I had peaks in certain things, for example, music. I was always great at music. Um, when I was seven, I, I started tinkling about on these. Uh, some of you oldies will remember these. They were like, a, a, I don't know, maybe two or three foot long. The keys, maybe minuscule wee things, and they made awful noises. And you could only play one key at a time. They were like wee Casio things. I'm branch out in there. Um, but, uh, and I tinkled away on it. And my dad decided, oh, he actually can play that. Let's give him a bigger keyboard. And it kind of got bigger and bigger. And I had some great times. I had some awful times, actually, as well, to tell you the truth. Um, I had a couple of, you know, I had a, a, a teacher that I, was, was brilliant. Um, and then I had another teacher who was, was, was phenomenal. Uh, and her name was Vi Bridgman. Sadly, she passed away many years ago. She was part of a duo. Uh, she was an organist. Uh, and um, drummer duo in Perth called Charlie and Vi, who incidentally were the, uh, they used to play, or they did play rather, at my granny and granddad's silver wedding anniversary. Oh, that we're talking donkeys years ago now. Um, so anyway, the music side of things carried out through my school. I always did enjoy music. I was always ahead of everybody else when it came to the keyboard playing uh, and so on. And I, I, I loved it. Um, it was great. I used to play afterwards. I got lessons out of school thanks to my dad um, and he believed in me uh, he pushed me and kept it going and, and I eventually ended up playing in 
the hotels around Perth, golf clubs and places like that. And it would only have been, uh, you know, 13, 14 years old. And it's, quite honestly, I could make those things, I could make it sing. This, I ended up playing the double manual organ, I could play those things like, like something else. Uh, but here we are, I'm, you know, we're talking 20, 30 years later, and sadly now I can't, I can, I can play it and I can get by, but I am certainly no expert, and now I'm very envious of the 13-year-old me, because I don't really have the drive or the passion for it anymore. And this is the kind of where I'm going with this video, I suppose, is that some of the things in life that you, you, that you, you go for and that you do for, you've got to believe and you've got to kind of try and have passion and belief, and it's very difficult. Um, for many years, I've worked for other people. My dad's got his own musician business, which I worked in after school uh, and before school and so on. And uh, it was hard going, but I yeah, met loads and loads of people, um, from the oldies to young people uh, to fuddy-duddy, odd folk uh, to right shit, actually, um, and some fantastic people over the years that I just I couldn't even name now, to be honest. Um, but the work ethic and the passion side of it, I think I've certainly got from him. But the music was one bit, um, and that kind of has transpired into more singing now, and I don't want to go too much into that here, but some of you know that I do uh, singing in a particular act that I do, and I'll come into that another time. In fact, I've got another channel on the go with that, but I'll, 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 I'll put a link into that some other time when I'm finished doing, doing this video. So the music was always one thing I was good at at school, and the other thing was computers. I was always pretty decent with um, with you know word processing, figuring out computers, how to work them, to to type brilliantly fast. Um, you know, I, I was always excellent with that. Um, but the hypnotherapy started when I saw Paul McKenna, as I said, and um, I ended up writing a letter which got me into the computers. Uh, and I got in touch with Vicky when I was probably about 14 years old, 14, 15, after I seen Paul McKenna. I'd actually got one of his videos back in the day when. Uh, you know, VHSs were around, and none of your DVD stuff now. Or Betamax, if you remember some of the other ones you'll remember. Anyway, so, um, I watched this video, and it was brilliant, I loved it, and I wanted to be able to do that. So I did a bit of research in the Yellow Pages, I found out where Twyker's Natural Therapy Centre was only just along the road, and I wrote to Vicky and said, look, I want to be a therapist, I want to be a hypnotherapist, train me and qualify me. I didn't quite know how I was going to fund it at 14 or 15 years old, I had no idea. But I did actually write for information, and she, like a lot of these sort of places, I expected that I wouldn't get a reply. But Vicky did reply, and she wrote a nice letter telling me that, she, you know, thanks for an interest and so on, and look, I need to grow up a bit, and you know what I'm saying. And I did this actually most years, I wrote her a letter, and eventually I went out and saw her and her husband Neil, who's sadly not with us anymore. Um, but, but I went and saw them, and she was wonderful. Uh, I, it totally inspired me. To, to be able to, I don't suppose at that time perhaps it was the hypnosis now I think back. I had some pretty shit times actually when I was younger and when I think back it was some of them were pretty dark and I think more than the hypnosis, I got to know a person that, that had an absolutely 100% uh, unconditional care for someone else and the only other person I ever felt like that from was my granny. Um, who, I, who I spent a lot of years with, uh, and I, you know, I, I stayed with her for quite a long time in my life. But anyway, she 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 sort of demonstrated that someone else could make someone else feel better, and it wasn't necessarily about her qualifications or her hypnosis particularly, but it was somebody that was able to sort of relate to someone else, to 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 to, to talk to them, to to make you feel valued and opinion. And and there's another part of it actually was to be able to tell me off, uh, or to tell what she actually thought. There's a big part of my life, as some of you know, that, 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 that are my friends, thankfully, and maybe some that are not, and maybe some are going to be friends. Um, I just say it how I think it is. And for a long number of years, I was very scared of my own opinion. And I didn't want to sort of express that opinion for fear of judgment from other people. And I carried that for many years, many, many years. Um, and it wasn't until just the last few years that a certain person uh, had said to me, look, why, why are you apologising for the, the bits that's you? And, and I, know, I know I'm a bit all over the place with this, but it is all going to come together at the end whenever I finish talking. 
But see when it's when I'm now doing funerals for people and I'm writing funerals about their life. I did one recently of a younger girl that sadly was only in her late twenties, barely even lived a life, and just through by chance something that happened, uh, she's no longer with us anymore. A, a total natural thing that that could happen to any of us. Um, but the point of getting up with a with a life story and with what I started this video off to say was more a personal side for me is that I learned an awful long time it went past in my life before I realised that I'm allowed to have my opinions. I, I'm, I don't have to comply with what the world says I should be or should should act like or in and, and judgement and, and all these other things perhaps that make up who we are as individuals. So my journey is individual to me. My way isn't necessarily the right way. My advice isn't necessarily the correct advice for you. But when you're watching my videos and you're following along with the journey as we've called it, then you'll see perhaps that, as Vicky has taught me right through the years, you've got to be able to, to have value in yourself. And it's a difficult thing to hold up. And as much as I've been qualified now for oh, over 22 years, I must be now, as I said, and I've done jobs through the motor trade, retail, I've done some pretty shit jobs um, that you would think were crap, but I had so much fun meeting people. And it all comes down to people. It's not a qualification. It's, it's not whether you're the best at this or the best at that. It's all about you and relating to people. And that's the bit I know that I do very well. So whatever you get out of watching my videos, whether it's just interest in my life, if it's interest in the things I've got to say about funerals or hypnosis, and whatever else we'll probably waffle at, or I'll waffle at, no doubt. Um, you can comment, you can ask questions, tell me what you think. You're allowed your opinion. I'm not going to be scared of what you think, as long as you're not scared to listen to what mine is also. So when it comes to passion, and this is probably to end this, I don't want to go waffling on for, for forevermore. Um, I just want to give you wee snippets here and there, just enough for you to give you four or five minutes of thought in your life. For you guys out there that is not sure of who you are. Uh, there's a great part of life that's hidden from the world and it's people pretending to be people or not. And one of the and, and it's very, very difficult to hold that up. And when I deal with clients, for example, uh, who have got all these self esteem issues, confidence issues, um, you know, all sorts of problems that's that's a lot of the time up in their mind. It's all down to what we think of each other, what we think of ourselves. Um, where we place our own value in the world. What I would probably say is that you've got to live authentically. Be the real you. Don't hide your thoughts. Don't hide your opinions. Um, be bold. Go out there and decide, right, fuck it, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try this. I've tried to start this business that I'm now doing, hypnotherapy, my funerals. Um, I've tried two or three times and failed. Uh, on two or three times, and I don't mean failed to make it successful. I failed at sticking with believing that I can do this and believing that it's something I'm good at and that I will be able to do. I've always been defeated, not by me just jacking it in and giving up, because of my lack of belief in me and myself. And that's not just to take the, the belief part and, and arrogantly think that I'm the best thing on the planet. It's not about that, but it's believing in your ability, and in my case, believing that it's possible, that I can do something I'm passionate about, and something that I, I'm good at, and seeing what I can give back to the world, but not just about, we're not going to be all Mr. Humanity all of a sudden. I've got to get something out of it too, I've got to make a living of course. So I guess the end of this video, my point I'm getting to with all of this, and I've no doubt I'll waffle at some other video and I'll tie up some loose ends that I've no doubt created in this one. You've got to believe in you. You've got to be the authentic, real you. No bullshit, no pretending to the world, no standing up and pretending you're something you're not. But by being the real you, people then appreciate. People can see right through you to see that you're being real. Then they're more likely to believe in you as a person, which then compounds their belief and your own belief in yourself. So whatever you're doing out there,
Keep it fucking real. Be normal. Be you. And do something that you're passionate about. And just see where it goes. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me waffle on. And you're currently with me doing what I'm trying to do. Is go on my journey of seeing where it goes. Hope you like this one. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.